Why the hell is everything in the United States so freaking expensive? It has gotten to the point where nobody can afford to live there. I was talking to my mom the other day. She told me how much their prices have increased for things like food and utilities. They're on a fixed income, so it is not easy for them to absorb a 50 to 100% price increase. But it is not like that everywhere. There are countries where the cost of living is still low and you can afford to buy the things that you need without going broke. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the 10 things that you cannot live without, but that most people in the United States cannot afford, starting with number 10, and that is insurance. You have to have it and it's expensive. And if you make a claim, they either raise your rates or they cancel you and this happened to me my insurance broker told me i should think twice before making a claim against my auto insurance because they were going to jack my rates up really high and well at least he was honest yeah that happened to me i got robbed in san francisco i had a bag stolen out of a rental car it had four thousand dollars worth of electronics in it and i filed a claim for that and then when my policy was up they canceled me and i had to get new insurance and then there's health insurance Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. This is especially difficult if you're self-employed like I have been most of my career or if you work for a small company like Amelia has because the insurance is terrible. It's expensive, you get very little coverage, we have high deductibles and you better hope nothing happens because even with the insurance, you're still going broke. Yeah, and a lot of people are working in a job that they just don't want or that they hate or they are delaying their retirement only to have health insurance. Yeah, that is just wrong. And you don't have to do that if you leave. Number nine is tipping. Why has tipping gotten so out of control? I shouldn't have to tip at Walmart. One of our viewers told us they went to a concert at Red Rocks in Denver where we used to live. They bought a $40 t-shirt and when they flipped the little kiosk thing around to pay for it, they were asking for a tip. All they did was bend over and pick up a t-shirt. Yeah, and we heard from another viewer that they went out to dinner, they live in Florida, and now that the tip requirement when you use a credit card is 25 to 30 percent. 25 to 30 percent, that is insanity. It is crazy, and you know what? That's uniquely U.S. American. In Ecuador, tipping is not common. The Ecuadorians typically do not tip. When we tip, it's usually 10% or a dollar per person, whichever one is more. But if you don't tip, you, they don't make you feel guilty. They don't spit in your food. They don't expect it. So it's a lot different than the United States. And man, it saves a lot of money when you're not paying an extra 20 to 30% for your meal. Number eight is education. People are going into debt just to get a college degree and it could take years, decades to pay those loans off, those student loans, it did for me. And some people are paying on that debt for the rest of their lives. You know, if you're a student, it might actually be cheaper for you to move to a foreign country, go to a private university, than it is to go to a public university in your hometown. That is insane. In nearly every other country, public universities are tuition free. Even here in Ecuador, you can go to a public university, you have to pass an entrance exam. That means you actually have to be kind of smart to go. But if you do, you don't have to pay tuition to go to the public university. They have private universities here too, and they're a fraction of the cost compared to the United States. Number seven is public transportation. The U.S. is pretty lacking in public transportation, in my opinion, unless you live in a major metro like Chicago, and then those prices add up pretty quickly. Yeah, we lived in Denver. We had the light rail system. It didn't work very well, to be honest. I lived out in Greenwood Village. It was faster and cheaper for me to drive downtown and park for a day than it was to take the light rail. And I used to pass that light rail on the highway. I'd be like, hi guys because I could drive clear downtown park for about $8, so that's less, I mean, not factoring in the gas, but I also didn't have to wait forever. So it took about half the time to do that, unless it was rush hour or a football game. We often rode it for the football games because you didn't wanna to have to drive during that or after that or pay the highly inflated parking rates. It is just not like this in other countries. First of all, a lot of other countries have much, a much more robust public transportation system. They certainly do here in Ecuador. We can ride the Tranvia in Cuenca for only 35 cents. Yeah, 35 cents for their light rail compared to $10 in Denver. Taxis and Uber rides are so much more affordable here. We can go across town for two to three dollars, but in Denver, we were paying 10 to $20. Number six is elder care. 
And I think it's time that we all admit that the United States hates old people. I, there, I said it, and it's true. There are some unscrupulous elder care facilities out there that are draining all of the money from their residents. And then they hit up their family members and even their neighbors. We've been reading about this. It's been all over the news, and it is just terrible. Yeah, we saw a story where a woman took her neighbor to an elder care facility and signed some paperwork. Now that company is going after her to pay the elder care bills. That is absurd. It's also really expensive, especially for high quality care. And long-term care is not covered by Medicare. Yeah, a lot of people think it is. It's not. That's why you'll hear older people talking about spending down. And that basically means they have to get rid of all of their assets so that they qualify for poverty level and they can go on Medicaid. So Medicaid will then cover their long-term elder care expenses. That is ridiculous to force our elderly to go into poverty just to have care. Facilities in other countries such as Mexico are so much more affordable. You can stay in a nice place for around $2,000 a month. When we were visiting Ahihik, we met a guy who had just checked his mom into a, one of those facilities and he was raving about it. And he said the food was so good, he was just gonna eat there. Here in Ecuador, it's really common to have in-home care. In fact, we know a woman who used to be an in-home care nurse, and she said that they charge about $500 a month for an eight-hour day, six days a week. They'll come to your house. You can hire two or three people for a couple of thousand dollars per month to come to your house and take care of you. They'll even do cleaning, cooking, and shopping for you. Sometimes it feels like the walls are closing in. The prices are through the roof and the cost of living is on the rise around the world. Investing isn't really an option anymore. It has become a requirement. And that's why we're really excited to talk about Masterworks, today's sponsor. We're not financial experts, but we do our research. The traditional stock bond portfolio had its worst performance last year since 2008's financial crisis. It's a scary time to be making financial decisions, but there is an asset class that just had a record-breaking year. Masterworks is an award-winning company that lets almost any investor seek returns from this asset in the midst of the chaos. You may have seen their CEO on CNBC, Forbes, or CNN. They buy paintings from legendary artists and securitize them with the SEC. This allows you to diversify your portfolio with an asset that can help protect your purchasing power, even in a time of consistently rising prices. Past performance is no guarantee of future results, but their track record is impressive. Since November, they've sold artwork for net returns of 10.4%, 13.9%, and 35%. Masterworks has become so popular that they have plans to launch new offerings every week. Over 600,000 people have signed up so far and there's so much demand that they have a wait list, but our subscribers get priority access. Yes, so click the link in the description to get started. Number five is utilities, and we're talking about the internet, cell phone, gas, and electricity. Yeah, it's really affordable here. We have uh, internet plan is $45 a month. Our mobile phone plan is $20 a month, give or take. And it's faster and more reliable than it was in Denver. Yeah, and we found similar prices when we were in Mexico, and there are similar prices throughout Latin America. It is just more affordable for the basics that you need. If you live a long ways from the equator, like in the United States or Canada, you're gonna have expensive heating and air conditioning bills. We don't have that here in Ecuador because where we live, we don't even have a heater or an air conditioner. No, we don't need it because the temperatures are mild year round since we live in the mountains now. And that way we save a lot of money. Our electric bill is around 20 dollars a month. It was more expensive when we lived on the coast because we did have air conditioning there and that ran us about $70 a month. Number four is housing and even though the housing market has cooled off a little bit in the past few months it's still out of control. Rents are sky high and now the Fed has declared war on interest rates because of inflation. That makes total sense. Plus property taxes and home insurance they keep going up because they keep raising the assessed values and that is really hard on people who are on a fixed income. I just talked to my mom and she told me that every year they raise their taxes and insurance and that's hard for them to pay for because their income stays the same on a fixed income and their little bitty tiny social security cost of living increase does not even cover the increase in the homeowners taxes. People from high cost of living areas such as California are moving to the cheaper parts of the country and that is also driving up prices. It's not like that here in Ecuador. It's about one third the cost for a similar place compared to the United States. 
and cost of living, you can easily live in Ecuador and a lot of other countries around the world, a couple for less than $2,000 a month. That's all expenses, including, including health insurance. We showed how much cheaper rentals are in other parts of the world in our great rental reaming video. So check below for a link to that video. Number three is gas and diesel. And let's be honest for just a minute here. The cost of gas and diesel drives inflation a lot more than low interest rates and low unemployment. Gas prices were out of control in 2022 around the globe. It was terrible. People could not afford to fill their tanks. And even though the prices have come down, people are still affected by this. Yeah, here in Ecuador though, the cost of fuel is regulated. So diesel right now is $1.75 per gallon and low octane unleaded is $2.40 a gallon. That's per gallon, not per liter. Yeah, and when Ecuador wanted to raise the rates here, the country said, hell no, and they had a protest and shut down the country. But in other parts of the world, this just isn't even an option like in the United States. Yeah, everybody just accepts, oh, cost of gas has gone up. It, it shoots up like a rocket and parachutes down. But here in Ecuador, if they try to raise the prices, they just shut the country down. <laughs> yes. Also here in Ecuador, we don't have a car and that has saved us the most amount of money because we just don't even need it because they have such great public transportation. Yeah, we've lived here over five years with no car and no need for one and no plan to get one. Number two is food and you can't live without it. So why is it so much more expensive in the US? When we lived in Denver over five years ago, we spent $800 a month just for the two of us on food. Every time we went to the store, we always said it was $30 a bag. Here in Ecuador, we spend about $350 a month and that's everything, including the dog food. And we usually spend like three to $5 per bag for produce and we get amazing produce and almost all the produce we buy is organic. We are so lucky to have fresh food available year round. It is not picked green and sprayed with chemicals to be shipped around the world. And now for the number one thing that you cannot live without, but most people in the United States cannot afford and that is healthcare. And we're talking about doctor's visits, medications and procedures, they're expensive. And sometimes you have to wait for months and months before you can even get an appointment. And that is the main reason why we left the United States. Yeah, we talked about that in our healthcare in the US is a scam video. So check below for a link to that video too. The U.S. has the most expensive healthcare in the world, but the quality is just average compared to so many other countries. Yeah, according to some of the rankings, our healthcare system here in Ecuador, the private system is ranked higher than the United States. Nearly every other country in the world has affordable private healthcare and free or mostly free public healthcare. Private healthcare in other countries is 40 to 90% less than the United States. Here in Ecuador, it's about 70 to 90% less. We had a, or I should say, I had a bunch of procedures done last year and I documented all those in a blog post on our website so you can kind of get an idea of what things cost and also the quality that we got. I kind of talked about that as well. It's unbelievable, the cost for quality here in Ecuador. And we can go to the pharmacy and pick up the medications that we need without having to deal with insurance bureaucracy or having to go to the doctor. And they are so much more affordable. Yeah, we've talked to several retirees here that said that it is cheaper for them to pay for their prescriptions out of pocket with cash, no insurance than it was to pay for the Medicare prescription plan, plus all the co-pays and the non-covered costs back in the U.S. This is why medical and dental tourism is so popular with U.S. citizens. You should not have to go into debt to buy food and health care and all the other things that you need to live. If you cannot afford the basic necessities of life in the U.S., then consider moving abroad like we did and like millions of other people have done. If this video struck a chord with you, we think you're going to like this one next. The world is not nearly as scary as we've been led to believe, and there are so many countries that are a hell of a lot cheaper. So click that subscribe button if you want help locating the exit, because that's what we do. And strike that like, and we'll see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.